Hello everyone and welcome to this video which is in our Great Engine opening series. I'm Grandmaster Matthew Sadler and um, in this video we are continuing our look at Leela's opening suggestions. So uh, that's Leela using the WDL Contempt feature. Now if you don't know what that is do take a look at my blog matthewsadler.me.uk um, and also the previous series of videos, about 10 or 11, which uh, showed what Leela can do when this uh, feature is activated. Essentially, Leela can find lots of interesting, maybe not the best objective moves, but lots of tricky and difficult ideas that your human opponents will find very difficult to meet. So um, in this video, we are looking at the Vienna. And as always, I've played a huge number of, uh, of games with uh, all of Leela's suggestions at uh, 3 plus 0 and on Lee Chess. And uh, well, I can certainly confirm that, uh, that these ideas are pretty tricky for my opponents. So let's have a look. How does this go? What is the Vienna? So that's d4, d5, c4, e6, knight f3, knight f6, knight c3, and now d takes c4. That's the Vienna. And then after um, e4, two possibilities. There's bishop b4, which is the traditional Vienna. And there's also the slightly more modern b5. And b5, um, I've had quite a bit in, uh, in Blitz in actual fact. So it seems to be reasonably popular. Um, what's the idea of it? Well, obviously, if you take on b5, then black takes the pawn on e4. That's the, the basic idea. White can play e5, knight d5, knight b5, which is the main line. And now knight b6 from um, from black. And this is very similar to a Courtenoy idea in the in the Queen's Gambit accepted. And uh, you know that pawn on c4 might go in the end. It's not easy to get back, but um, it might just fall because it's doubled and uh, close to white's position. But as compensation, black has lots of light squares around the white center. Possibility to attack the white center with c5 at some stage. In practice, it does seem to be very difficult to make something of this as white. Um, so I was looking for something just a little bit more, a little bit more aggressive, a little bit, bit more at the black position. And, um, well, Leela certainly gave me that. Um, knight takes b5, knight takes c4, and then bishop c4. Very unusual. Very few people uh, do this. Um, one of the reasons for it is that um, black's got this disruptive move, bishop b4. Um, but Leela was very happy with this and wanted to play the move king f1. What on earth is the idea of this? Why would this be interesting? Well, there's there's a, um, a very clever tactical idea at the base of it because uh, castles from black is uh, is normal. Um, and then queen c2. And the big point about it is that if black plays the natural bishop b7, white plays bishop d3. And you'll notice that we're not only attacking the knight on e4, we're also attacking the pawn on c7 and we're threatening knight takes c7 um, winning the uh, um, winning the exchange and that is the annoying little thing really that um, that um, well gives black something to to think about and um, yeah I mean it's not 100% easy for black um, knight f6 is Leela's main line um, and now bishop g5 was Leela's main line I mean bishop f4 is also quite nice um, just to frighten your opponent just uh, targeting that um, c7 pawn that's quite nice but bishop g5 is the uh, Leela move knight bd7 and then h4 and rook h3 and um, yeah I mean I just quite like this concept somehow I mean you know we'll, we'll go rook g3 we've got h5 to h6 we've got knight to e5 yeah, you know, it's um, um, it's not necessarily, you know, like a winning advantage for um, for white, but it's definitely aggressive and it's much more um, uh, challenging for black than the main line, certainly in um, in blitz. Um, what um, um, what I got in um, in my games um, a few times was the move knight d6, which does feel like a, a challenging alternative, really. Yeah, you know, it's um, you sort of say, okay, well, I'm uh, I'm retreating the knight, and I'm um, I'm uh, attacking this bishop on c4, and also I'm going to get you know get rid of this knight on um, on b5. However, um, White has the idea knight g5. We're going to have a look at one of my games. Uh, I, it's a little bit crazy this one. So threatening queen takes h7, mate. If you go g6, I'm just going to take take and go h4 and um well i'm i'm going for it already and uh, this was very very dangerous for uh, for black you know the engines were uh, having to do some very good goalkeeper work to uh, to survive 
So um, um, after knight g5, my opponent played knight f5, and in I went with g4. You can see, I mean, I'm, I'm having a good time already here. So um, h6 was played, just to uh, chase a nice way. g takes f5, h takes g5. Yeah, and now, um, yeah, it wasn't, uh, I didn't necessarily play the, um, uh, the best moves here. I'm just trying to um, uh, have a look at what I actually played here. Yeah, I mean, Rook G1 was uh, definitely the, the strongest there. Just um, going to tee up with Bishop G5 and then have Bishop H6 or F6. I mean, it's really, really strong. If you play E takes F5, then um, you're also opening up this Bishop towards the King, which is really unpleasant. Um, I went for not a bad move either. I played H4, G4, Bishop G5 here. Um, and then um, after that, we got um, bishop to e7 was played. And then um, I played f takes e6 here. Um, actually, the engine's like um, rook e1 here as well, which you know also looks pretty strong. I played f takes e6. Black played bishop e6, and uh, here I, I went a little bit wrong, actually. Um, rook e1, again, very aggressive. I mean, the big problem is for black, you know, if you go bishop g5, I go hg. But this pin is actually really unpleasant on the e-file. Um, I'll just show you my bananas game, because that's just how I played I played bishop b 6 and knight c7. You can understand, you know, of course, I was uh, thinking of this idea. I was fixated on it. But I, I sort of um, uh, only realised, you know... Before I played knight c7, but I thought, what the hell, we're going to go for it. Uh, the black has got g3. By taking on e6, I've um, opened up the line of this rook on my king. Um, but I went f4, which was kind of over the top. I mean, I, I could I could have played something like bishop e3, for example. But I played f4 because, after all, you only live once. Um, bishop takes g5, h takes g5, rook takes f4, king e1. And, um, well, there's no check at the moment. And, of course, I do have uh, Queen H7 somewhere. So who knows? Um, yeah, it would have been the cleverest now to throw in G2 um, just to try and distract the white pieces and then come in. Uh, but uh, black played Queen takes D4. So I went Queen H7 check and I'm winning again. King F7, Queen H5, King E7, Queen E8 check. And after King D6, there's no worries about does Rook D1 work or not. I've just got knight b5, forking the king and queen. Okay, there were many better ways of uh, playing this for white, but you can see the um, the attacking potential here somehow. And, uh, you know, it's very often the case, you know, with these leader ideas that um, there's, um, you know, there's a general attacking idea and there's that little, you know, little tactic idea as well, you know, and uh, that just gives the extra venom to, uh, to all these ideas. Um, yeah, sometimes I spot them. In this case, I did actually uh, spot it, but sometimes I need the engines, you know, to, uh, to play some engine games so that I can actually work out, you know, oh, but what were all the ideas that, uh, that Leela had? But this I would definitely recommend. It's definitely scoring quite nicely for me with uh, with white. But okay, the main traditional line is um, uh, bishop b4 here. And um, well, white's got a few uh, ideas. You know, there's uh, queen a4 check, there's bishop g5. But uh, Leela goes for the pawn sacrifice, which is bishop takes c4, which is probably the main line at the moment. And after knight takes e4, then castles. And we've got... Um, Two ideas in this position, basically. Um, there's knight takes c3, uh, followed by retreating the bishop, and there's knight f6, retreating the knight. Um, so knight c3, let's have a look at that first. That's the one that's the most popular line. I don't think I've had knight f6. Maybe I haven't even had it at all, actually, in my games yet. b takes c3. Now, bishop takes c3 is definitely thought to be too risky. Um... We go uh, rook b1 and um, um, we've got ideas like rook b3. The rook's going to swing over to the king side. Remember that idea. Um, and uh, in principle, this is very, very strong for um, for white. This is just standard theory. Um, but what uh, black is doing is either playing bishop d6 or bishop e7. Now, what I actually took uh, from Leela was, uh, let's have a look at um, bishop d6 first of all which has been um, more popular than bishop e7. And what Leela was doing in these positions was something quite unusual, um, which was to play the move um, queen e2. Um, in this particular position, knight g5 is a normal engine move. I've got some analysis of that as well. But queen e2 was Leela's idea. And what Leela wanted in all these positions was just to go rook d1 and then go rook d3 
and uh, move the rook over to the king side and just attack. Um, and this, you know, seemed like a, a very nice, easy and, um, and very typical way of playing. You know, so it's nothing uh, G4-ish or whatever, nothing crazy like that. It's just um, a plan and, a, and an approach, you know, and, um, and I like it. So uh, let's have a look. So, you know, after castles, um, rook D1. Um, no, uh, no worries, I'm not changing anything. I'm just sticking to this approach. Knight D7 and then um, playing H4. And um, uh, yeah, there are other approaches, but this is, uh, you know, this is uh, kind of quite nice, really. Just uh, put the H pawn in. Um, I might be going for H5 to H6. I might want to go Knight G5 and I've got Rook D3 in reserve as well. So after H4, um, a couple of moves here. If Knight F6, then I liked Rook D3. Um, um, threatening, um, you know, knight e5 coming in. Uh, there's also uh, knight e5 is uh, is possible as well. I think I had a game where black played h6 and then I went rook d3. And uh, actually already this is a winning advantage. This combination of knight e5 unchallenged plus rook d3 is really, really strong. Um, and after king h8, um, well, there's all sorts. But um, I went g4, which is also dragon's choice as well. Um and um, yeah, my opponent played uh, knight g8, I think, and I played g5, and I was just crushing it, basically. Look at that. Whack! In we go. Just completely, completely killing. Um, and I mean, really, you know, um, this whole idea of, um, um, of getting the knight on e5, the rook swinging over, is really, really strong. So h6 is a possibility, and then I'm playing uh, rook d3. And, um, well, c5, this was um, um, another game uh, of mine. And then I played knight e5. And it's suddenly quite serious for uh, for black. You know, I mean, um, uh, it's not lost or anything like this, but we've got quite a few dangerous ideas. And indeed, after queen c7, I whipped out bishop takes h6 here. I mean, if you go takes, I'm just going rook check king h7 and queen h5 and this is really really dangerous i mean i've got you know bishop d3 check ideas if you go f5 i go queen g6 and um well this was the best the engine could suggest takes takes an f5 but then i go rook g6 and i'm just threatening queen takes h6 mate so you know i mean killing killing what am i doing here so um Knight takes e5 was played by my opponent, and I took, took. It's just a, a small edge for white, this, but, um, yeah, pretty unpleasant to play for black. Um, I played um, bishop d2, bishop d7, rook e1, and bishop f6 was apparently a losing blunder. Uh, you needed to go bishop h2 check, but, um, yeah, okay. It's not, not, not particularly easy to see that this could be the only saving move. Um, there's quite a few ideas. Um, Bishop g5 was uh, pretty strong. That was Dragon's choice. Rook g3 was uh, Stockfish's choice. My choice was also quite strong. Rook f3, that's plus three. And after Rook fd8, I just took, took and played Bishop h6. And it's just going to be mate. Um, f5, Queen h5. And that was uh, a win against a 2650 rated opponent on Lee Chess. I mean, I think you can see how, you know, how powerful this idea is. And it's very easy. You know, I mean, uh, I'm, uh, I was playing all these games, you know, without having uh, analysed it at all, just uh, in you know, general attacking terms. And it felt very, very good. Yeah, I've got a lot of engine games and analysis now, you know, to uh, to really help you all there. And it's in the associated PGM. But um, but yeah, this is really very, very powerful indeed. I mean, this is also pretty strong, this same scheme against Bishop E7. I go queen e2 castles and rook d1. And um, yeah, I mean, I had an opponent uh, play the move c5. But this this is very, very strong for white. I mean, I'm threatening uh, bishop takes f7. And if you play um, queen c7, which is what I had in the game, then queen e4 is total carnage. Again, this is against 2700 opponent on uh, Lee Chess. Knight c6, bishop f4, queen d7, bishop takes c6, resigns. Because after queen c6, queen e7 just wins a piece. 
I mean, um, you know, I don't think it's coincidence that I'm really winning so many games against, you know, quite strong players, um, you know, in 14 or 15 moves. These ideas of Leela are challenging, you know, and uh, they really carry the threat of, you know, future kingside attacks, you know. And, uh, you know, when players try and react quickly or too violently, then, yeah, you know, they're just getting punished somehow. You know, I really, you know, really don't think it's coincidence somehow. Knight d7's a little bit stronger, but we just go rook d3 again. And, uh, you know, just the idea again, we're going to play knight e5, rook g3. Um, actually, Leader also suggested the idea of uh, of playing um, bishop to f4 and then playing knight d2 and rook over to g3 or h3. Very, very easy, you know. And, um, yeah, just a really nice, um, really nice position. So I definitely recommend that. Um, and the nice thing is that after knight f6, we do something very similar. A3, bishop e7, that's the normal move. And then queen e2, castles and rook d1. And again, I'm just going to play knight e5 and rook d3 over. Um, now I've done a lot of analysis on this. Um, and um, But yeah, again, you know, it's looking uh, pretty decent somehow. I think I'll just show you the, the main line of uh, Stockfish. Just take a look at the PGN for uh, more variations. Um, a6, bishop a2. Um, just to be able to meet uh, b5 with d5, which is quite challenging, to say the least. Um, then, um, uh, yeah, knight d5 was um, what uh, Dragon wanted. And then rook d3, bishop d7, cunning little idea, trying to get out to, um, to b5 there. But then just knight e5, bishop b5 takes rook h3, and I challenge any human to uh, survive this. I mean, Dragon survived it, but this was, you know, uh, g4 came in threatening g5 and queen h5 i don't think you're going to find a human player being able to uh to you know to tiptoe its path through uh through great i actually don't particularly understand why on earth this isn't just completely mating somehow so uh you know even i'm uh i'm seeing this game and i don't understand it uh at all so yeah you know it's um it's really very very unpleasant for uh for black these uh this continuation you know and uh again you know your engine can say 0, 0.00 and uh, as a black player you can sort of say okay well that's sorted but um yeah try and play against it and um i think you'll see a lot of problems so i can really recommend this line for white i was uh, quite worried about vienna um i mean um I, I always i never used to play these knight f3 knight c3 lines as a professional always found them quite tricky I have to say uh, since um, i've been following leela's recommendations in this stuff i've been having a whale of a time i really have so uh, yeah hopefully this is going to help you too as well so there we are. That was the uh, the video. Hope you enjoyed that. If you like the video, give a like, subscribe to the channel, tell your friends. Take a look at my new books, Silicon Road to Chess Improvement and Re-Engineering the Chess Classics, full of stuff like this. and uh, But just, you know, beautifully structured and uh, explained very concisely. Not me, just, uh, <laughs> just uh, brain dumping uh, the first thing that comes into my head. And um, yeah, you know, otherwise do stay tuned for this video series because there's lots more to come. So there we are. Thanks very much for watching.